So I'm Annalisa and uh, very happy to see everybody. Thank you for having me here at IIT. I've uh, been here on the campus on many occasions uh, doing a lot of open source uh, work as well as working with many of the professors and their initiatives on open source projects in the past 10 years. So very happy to be here today to talk about uh, language technologies and engineering, Wikipedia and Indic language support. Um, I will try to keep this um, discussion a bit interactive, so don't be surprised if I ask you questions. And uh, I basically want to split it out into a couple of parts. First part, give you an overview of some of the areas I'm talking about and thinking about. And of course the second part in terms of having a more interactive session uh, to better understand some of the areas that you're working on in language technologies and um, some of the questions that you may have on what we talk about before that. So I kind of want to split it out into 40, uh, we have an hour approximately, and uh, 40 minutes on the presenting, hopefully, and then about 20 minutes to uh, have Q&A. Um, again, if you have a burning question, please reserve it for after we <laughs> go through. Don't miss, don't hold your thoughts and don't miss them. I want to hear all your questions. So, um, how many of you use Wikipedia? Come on, I've got to have a full show of hands. Everybody, right? Yes. So, um, as you know, Wikipedia is very, very popular and very, uh, very loved uh, project. It uh, really is the hard work of many, many hundreds of thousands of people all over the world contributing in different ways their knowledge to share with others and it really is an amazing phenomenon in terms of really an mega scale project on the internet and the web working collaboratively where millions of people come and read Wikipedia as well as contribute to content in different languages on Wikipedia, right? I mean everybody all over the earth uses Wikipedia. So what do I want to talk about today, right? Again, very specifically, talk about a lot of things because we are working on a lot of different projects and a lot of interesting areas that are just so cool, right? We're looking at mobile, we are looking at language technologies, we're looking at web engineering, we're looking at large scale performance and scalability, we're looking at algorithms, we're looking at enormous amount of things. But I want to talk about some specific areas related to Indic language computing. And the reason I say that is because um, by background, I'm an engineer. I started my career in uh, network engineering and in landed obviously into the internet uh, engineering and then moved on to web engineering. And language technologies is one slice of that, right? So when I started uh, looking at uh, language technologies and have been involved in localization and internationalization for many years now, but really digging into what we could support for Wikipedia, I wanted to look at a few facts that, you know, when you look at Indic languages, what is the reality, right? All of you read Wikipedia in English? Yes? Any other languages? Yes? Hindi, Marathi, Gujarati, any other languages? Tamil, right? But that's small, right? Mostly you go to English Wikipedia. So India has 23 official languages at this point, maybe becoming 25 soon, but 23 languages, eight major scripts in terms of writing systems, um, and literally thousands of years of literature verbal, oral, and then written, right? And um, yet, on the web, it's incredibly poorly represented. The collective wisdom of 1,200 million people on this subcontinent, India itself, and a few more million, hundreds of millions across the Indian subcontinent, is practically unrepresented on the web. It's almost as if this population doesn't exist. It doesn't. 
So it really is very poorly represented, and there are an enormous number of factors that you know about, and technology is only one of them, where you know, there are many factors as to why that is, right? We could argue for hours and days as to why, what those factors are and why. But at bottom line is access to the internet, access to computing, lack of language tools and devices, tools and data when you land on a computer you know, platform, whether that's mobile, desktop, or laptop, and assets like fonts, input methods, data, dictionaries, glossaries, all this stuff. Where is it for Indian languages? Tell me. So I mean, there, is, there is a fundamental red flag there. And that's why I mark these in red. So I look at it at the web as a really amazing opportunity. It's the first time in the history of mankind where everybody can have access at an equal level to a platform where everybody can talk, share, and uh, present ideas on. It really is that powerful. And yet, you're completely underrepresented. Much as we are, call ourselves a very techno technologically aware population, but we're very, very underrepresented. And when you come to Indic languages, it's even worse. We have to be joking with ourselves when we say that, hey, we speak so many languages, and we know so many languages, and we are multilingual, and we are diverse. But yet, we only look at English on the internet, right? So billions of people, we care to neglect or just say, oh, hey, they don't exist. They learn the language. If they can learn English, good for them. If they don't make it, who cares? So when you look at digital content on the platforms like Wikipedia, you'll immediately see that being reflected in the content and the type and the amount of content that exists on Wikipedia. Because that underrepresentation shows up very quickly. And that's what we're going to talk about. Why? So let me tell you a little bit about Wikipedia's scale. Wikipedia is the largest content repository on the planet today on the web. You know that. It has about 32 million articles in 287 languages. We have hundreds of other languages in incubation, which means that there are content communities who are very small and have less than 10,000 articles who are in incubation. We will not put them on production until there is critical mass in the community. But we do have 287 languages represented on Wikipedia itself. That's a lot of languages. Even in the scale of thousands of languages that exist on this planet, the first time in, the, uh, in history of digital history that there are that many languages being represented and content being sh showing up in those number of languages, 287. So let's talk about the breakdown. Take these 32 million articles. So who is creating this content and who cares, right? You have four and a half million articles out of that in English itself. That's quite a lot of article, right? And that's one of the reasons why you consume content in English, because you can find it in English. You may not find that same amount of detail in Polish or in, in Hindi or in Marathi, but you'll find it on English perhaps. And then you have four languages, European languages, German, Dutch, French, and Swedish, which are about one and a half million articles or so, right? And then you have one million articles or so for Italian, Polish, Russian, and Spanish. So where are we? We're the second largest nation on this planet. Where are we? Nowhere on the top 10. And that's 50% of Wikipedia's content. Right there. Right? So either we're a nation of illiterates who don't know how to write, or we are completely underrepresented. Right? the top 10 and this is the trend on the internet because this is Wikipedia is fundamentally a barometer for present <coughs> watching what kind of interaction is happening on the web in terms of consumption of content and creation of content we are nowhere to be seen in the top 10 
right, for Indic languages. And then we have 287 minus the top 10, 43 languages, which are 1 million to 100,000 articles. We have 73 languages, which are 99,000 to 10,000 in number of articles. Then we have 101 languages, which are 10,000 to 1,000 articles. Just think how fast that curve drops. There has to be something wrong. And then 1,000 to 100 articles, 61 languages. That's, that's fun stuff, right? There's really not real content. But in 287 languages and 797 production websites that we run, that is, there are 797 projects that Wikipedia's universe has, including Wikipedia and plus other projects that are related, we have very little representation from the Indic languages or Indic subcontinent. Out of half a billion users, we have half a billion unique users every month. So just think of the scale at which we are talking about this. 21 billion views of page, of, of page views a month. That's trillions of page views. And out of that, mobile which we see growing exponentially in terms of consumption of content, reading uh, content on, the, on mobile uh, devices. We are seeing 4.8 billion at this point in time, and it's growing constantly, right? It's growing almost at the 200% rate every year. So this is kind of a snapshot of the high level. Now I want to talk about in Indian languages. Let's get down to numbers, and let's see where we are. So you saw me break down the numbers on uh, the uh, 1 million plus top 10, right? 50% of Wikipedia is sitting on those top 10. And then the, you're seeing that from 1 million to 100,000, it's only one Indian language. Indeed. One. And that also is 111,000. How much is that? 1 lakh 11,608 articles as of now in Hindi. And how many speakers of Hindi exist in this country and worldwide? You want to take a guess? How many? 50 crores. 50 crores. Exactly. 50 million. 500 million. Sorry. So for 500 million people, we have 100,000 articles. That shows how well represented we are. Then let's get to the next few languages, which are in the Indic top five. Nepal Bhasha, which is a very, very small language and a very small community, but because it's so passionate, it stands at second number in our Indic language family. Isn't that interesting? It's a Devanagari-based script. So 70,000 articles there. Then Tamil. Tamil articles are very good in quality, most of them, but only 61,000. And does that represent the richness in Tamil, you know, conversations, uh, local culture, history, science? There's so much to talk about. Telugu is 57,000. Marathi is 40,000. Top five. What happens after that? So, and after that, you have. So you have one language in 100k plus. You have 16 Indian languages in the 99k to 10k. You have 10k to 1k is seven languages. And then you have five languages which have less than 1,000 articles. <coughs> 1,000 articles. That's pretty pathetic. So let's, let, I'm going to go through the numbers here. And I'm going to compare them with speakers. Just look at them. Does it, hopefully it will strike you as odd. So Hindi is 100,000 plus, almost 500 million speakers. Navari, 70,000, only 1.2 million speakers. Small language, very active, very, very interested in presenting some of their local information on the web. Tamil, 74 million speakers, 61,000 articles. Telugu, 75 million speakers, 
57,000 articles. Urdu, that is, yeah, that combines Pakistan, Kashmir, parts of India, you know, and, and Bangladesh coming in for contributions. 104 million speakers, 51,000 articles. Marathi, 71 million speakers, 40,000 articles. So if you look at the numbers, Bengali, 215 million speakers, 30,000 articles. Does that represent what you think it should represent? This is pathetic. Look at it, right? So you can see, look at Gujarati, 46 million speakers, 25,000 articles. So what's wrong here? Do you hate your own native language? Do you don't, do you don't like it? Are you ashamed of speaking it and using it? What is this, right? And then you have the smaller 10,000 and lower. Look at the languages. These are not small languages. Punjabi, Sanskrit, Oriya, Tibetan, Assamese, Dhojpuri, Sindhi, Kashmiri. Look at Look at the number of languages we have. People are interested. But look at the con content that is being represented. It's pathetic. It's just very, very, very low. Is it the last language? Sichuan? Sichuan is an, an uh, language which is spoken in the Northeast and borders into China, Eastern oh, China. There, it's a very large community of, uh, it's like Tibetan, but it is a very, very marginalized community in China. So they're not allowed to contribute. But you know, they want to. Look, I mean, they've come and started to try to contribute on Wikipedia. So you're seeing them, their interest, but they're not being able to contribute to other reasons. So again, I hope that provides you a little bit of perspective, because that's why I want to talk about open data. But it's how do you change this equation? It's pathetic that so many of you are coming to IIT and working or teaching and talking about all these great things that you think you're doing, but yet look at the representation on the web. Who cares what you do? So let's talk about open data and why I think that's something which is very, very important from a computational perspective and why it is so important to understand it because it is a model for creating more data through the applications that we are building and the model to have more people contribute. How many of you are familiar with different open data projects? Whether that's content or whether that's computation, like databases, Hadoop, Eucalyptus, different technologies or different. Uh, I, I, are you familiar with any of them? You've heard of them? Good. All right, so why, why do I talk about it? Because remember, data in the digital planet needs seeding, right? Because data creates data. It's just that, just like money creates more money. Data creates more data. So when people need to start contributing and want to start contributing, they have to have some fundamental components of data in order to start and easily contribute online, right? It's not good enough to just write an SMS language about a status that you were sharing for your personal edification and say you're sharing data. That also, you need to know something, right? You need to type, you need to know how language, you need to know some specific things. But open data is a model that is the most scalable way when you're looking at a huge universe of data to enable creation of data. And I'm, I'm, I'm interested in creation of data, right? As an engineer, I'm looking at Wikipedia, and I'm looking at how crowd crowdsourced contribution has literally worked and scaled for millions of articles of very high quality being created, and the seeding of data is key. How do you jumpstart, right? Even if we were starting today and saying, hey, today we have 111,000 articles in Hindi, I want to have one million articles in one year. How are we going to do that, right? So open data is one of the fundamental models that works in terms of jump-starting that. 
And the other is language corpora, right? When you ask folks, where is the language corpora that we're looking at that so that we can use that, the corpuses that we can use to be able to jumpstart other contributions. There's not much for Indic languages online, unfortunately. And looking at crowdsourced contribution models, and being on par with large European languages is, is something which is very key. You have to do it. Yeah. So what do we need? Right? Think of structured linked data. When you think of structured data, what do you think of? Do you understand what structured data is? It's interconnected data on the web. What does that mean? Can I ask somebody what do, what do you think of when I, when I say I need linked data? Something like RDF. Something like RDF, yeah, that's a format. But what, you know, do you think of specific applications? Related address, template. Yeah. Right? I mean, addresses, names, um, locations. Yeah. But different kinds of applications. Map information, when you look at data, maps on your Google Maps. You want to know everything about a location when you're going there. Right? But we need data. We need data of all kinds. We need cities and location information, we need geospatial information, we need education information. Every component that you looked at, look at is a challenge. You want to have that data mapped enormously in order to build a grid and a network of interconnected data to be able to help build better content. You have to do it. And these are projects in themselves. They're, they're crowdsourced projects that, hey, I care about all the forts in Maharashtra. I love those forts. I'd love to see all of them, you know, with their geo information, their history, their name, who built it, when it was built, when it was, uh, you know, uh, managed, and when it went into disrepair. I want to see all that information, a structured information on the web. So that if you're building a mobile application, you should be able to go and Look at that information and just build a nice application on top of it. But you need to fundamentally structure information and data in a digital consumable format in order to be able to share it, reuse it, make it available digitally, and be able to consume it. You have to structure information on the web. So these are so many different areas where data can be collected. And that in itself is a whole, whole ton of projects which can be done in a very, very cool crowdsourced way. Let me give you some examples. When I'm talking about this, I'm talking about it at a national level, at, an, at a state level, at a city level, at a local level. Anybody can do this, right? But there are some national initiatives which actually leverage this. In the US, there is data.gov. Take a look at it. Look at the amount of structured data that is available publicly for consumption by anybody who wants to make information available based on this. In the European Union, which is a confederation of tens of countries today, you have specific projects that are funded by the Union to go and structure data. Why does this matter? I'm, I'm not talking out of the, uh, you know, this is not an esoteric computer science uh, theory. It really is reality. If you don't structure data that you're talking about, how on earth will you make it available on the web? You can write as many research papers as you want to have no value because you don't have it available on the web. So in, even in Japan, linked data cloud, what does that mean? That there is a whole interconnection linked data uh, structures which can be used for different kinds of data. Just think of it as maps, layers of layers of information, and how you can tear those layers and mix and match them and create applications which people can use, right? So I would say evaluate these programs, take a similar initiative, and create some of these projects to be able to build large-scale repositories of data. And it doesn't matter how accurate it is initially. It has to be done, because if you don't have structured data and if you don't have digital data, you cannot get to creating any web data content 
of any large scale. It won't happen. So let's talk about Indic open data. This is at a, you know, at a global scale. So what am I missing in Indic data? We are building a huge content translation platform in Wikipedia, which means that it would be a platform that is going to enable people to be able to take a really nice article in English and be able to say, hey, I want a suggested translation in Hindi. And it will give you a suggested translation. And then you can correct it, adapt it, and then publish it. But it's at least bootstrapping some of the effort to make it easier to create content over that. So given that project, we started digging into Indic languages. We want Indic languages to be a million plus in each of the languages. How do we do this? How do we bootstrap this? And we found terrible things. There is just so little, either underdeveloped or missing data for terminology glossaries. Do you know what terminology glossaries are, right? Do you understand that? It's like taking medical terms, or taking math terms, or taking geography-based terms, right? Different kinds of categories of information. Dictionaries. Give me one good Hindi to English dictionary on the web. Tell me which good dictionary exists. When do you go and look up an Hindi to English dictionary? Do you ever look at one? Give me an example of any other Indian dictionary, Indian language dictionary online. Find me one. Thesauruses, where you want to look at synonyms lexical databases, corpora of information where you have Indic to Indic languages being compared for words. If I know Hindi and I want to write in Marathi, I want the right word to express myself in that language. Where will I find it? Unless you knew it from your school or from your mother, where do you go and find it on the web? Grammatical references. Give me a grammar book that you can go and look up on the online and go and look up how exactly to construct a good sentence in a language, in the language. Give me some examples. Email me when you find one. Spell checkers in Indian languages. Yes, I understand there's a lot of research that has been done around this. I want in production system. Auto completers. Machine translation. And we talk about knowing languages. Huh? So what are, the, what are the issues we face with Indic data? When I'm Wikipedia and I want to go and build all these tools, what are the problems I'm running into? Quantity of data. There's not enough Indic data. There's not enough content on the web. There's nothing digitally available. Very little. Quality of data verifiability of the quality of it, representation in different computational formats like RDF, retrieval. Give me a fast search engine that can go and search in Canada. Tell me. Lack of standardization, consistency in what the data is online, usage variation, I don't want to use Tamil from 500 years ago. That was classical Tamil. I want to use Tamil, which is used today. That may be a conglomeration of English words. It could be a conglomeration of Sanskrit words. It could be a conglomeration of local words that have come into Tamil. But I want to be able to use what is used today. Give me a version of it online. Tell me where it is. I will put it and add it for Wikipedia. Larger issues. You know of those things. Read through this. I tried going and looking. And at this point, I'd like uh, Pushpak to actually talk a little bit about his work in WordNet. Three minutes. Yes. yes. <laughs> so can you go back to your uh, last slide? Yes. <laughs> Sorry. Is this on? This one? Yeah. So, so th we, we do have uh, thesaurus I know. on the web, I know. all these uh, WordNets. And uh, we also have uh, Indo WordNet, which is a link structure of Indian language WordNets. And therefore, this problem of uh, finding equivalent words, let's say for a Hindi word, equivalent words in Tamil, 
Malayalam, Marathi, and so on, that you can do through in the world. Some amount of it, yes. Quite a lot, actually. And uh, so, so this this particular resource is very heavily used, it's and it, it has got very good coverage. Now we are waiting for support from the ministry for the second phase of the project. And all the synsets are linked by semantic relations, hypernemy, hypernemy, meronemy, everything. Mm -hmm. They also have uh, translated glosses, example sentences. Mm -hmm. And uh, they, many of them have morphology analyzers mm -hmm. as their front end also. Cool. Thank you. But, you know, I mean, other than specific instances where, you know, specific academic teams have taken on projects like WordNet, there's very little <coughs> that exists. I mean, you can go and find, look for websites. There are hardly, you know, a handful that you will find on online. And that's very problematic because when I want, as Wikipedia, I want to go and use these APIs or this, these glossaries or this data, it's very hard for me to consume them because I, they're not the right format, so they're not available, or they're not open, or they're not free, or they're not, you know, uh, API driven. There are lots of different issues that are existing. And uh, these are only some of the examples that I could find. I can find a handful. It's not really very much. So I want to introduce very briefly a small project uh, called Wikidata, which Wikipedia is doing, and introduce the concept and ask for your contribution. The reason I ask this is because all of you are interested in language technologies and building language content. And Wikidata is an attempt to structure some of the information, as I was talking about earlier, in terms of linked information, um, as a platform for all languages. Right? It is an open source project. It's uh, uh, basically what it is doing is I'm taking the example of Berlin as a city, the example of a city. And you can go as a contributor, go and create a, a, an element that you want to talk about. Right? That is, you know something about Bombay, Mumbai. And you want to add different details to it. So it's as simple. In the languages that you know, you can add the name. Right here you can see that it's translated and people have added versions in different languages. So it's language to language translation of a term and at the same time linking specific attributes to an element. Right? So that's structured information. You can also see it's, it's, uh, the country is Germany, Berlin is in Germany, continent is Europe, instance of a city, city with millions of inhabitants. These are all these attributes that are getting collected in a digital way. And it is an open repository, so you can actually create data for all the cities and places that you are familiar with or uh, items that you would like to add. And it's open. You can just sign up uh, as you log in and just add stuff. It's an open source project. But it is very easy to do. You don't have to program. You actually just need to add information. And it's really cool because you will always get credit. Wikipedia always has everybody's contributions itemized. Time zone, local dialing code, identifier, GND identifier, all kinds of stuff. Geo information, you know, it's like describing something in multi dimensions. And why is this project interesting? Because this is a format, it's a linked data. This is the only way to scale across languages. So I say I wanted to look up the information for Mumbai in Tamil. And I want to show it, show all the information for Mumbai in Tamil on the Tamil Wikipedia. I need a translation of those terms and, those, and then the words and the titles of all the categories. And if you can add it in the languages that you know, it will automatically go and show up on Tamil. So when I say, I want Tamil, the version of Mumbai in Tamil, give me the info box. You've seen the info box, right, on Wikipedia on the right hand side. It is as simple then, if you contribute information here, that it will automatically show it there. And that's the power of structured information, because you're not only providing this huge set data that you can consume anywhere, but you can also interchangeably use that same standardized information across multiple Indic languages. And that's very key, because if we don't have Indic languages supported across the board, it will not scale fast enough.
So I just wanted to show you that, and that's a project that I'd love for you guys to go and check out. It's wikidata.org, very simple, go check it out. Send me questions if you have any questions I can help you on. So I want to talk a little bit about what else Wikipedia is doing. Wikipedia is doing a lot in language technologies. We are enabling content translation, which means that we are starting to look deeply into machine translation, into linked data, into ontologies, into translation memories, into data corpuses and sources for 287 languages. And Indic languages are prioritized for us because we see a very high growth rate of consumption of those. But we want to get more data. And we want to get more um, <coughs> uh, uh, computational uh, components to be able to build that tool well. We're building a content translation platform integrated in the Wikipedias so that you can actually write in your own language easily and be able to translate with suggestions coming from machine translation, translation memories, different data sources, glossaries, terminologies, um, dictionaries, different kinds of suggestions. Building translation memories, adding digital dictionaries, leveraging crowdsourced linked data, you know, that's a massive project. What else are we doing? We are doing language selection. We have a whole uh, set of libraries. They're all open source, and we all reused and into any website or on the on which you're building or using. Where we have a language selector that you can go and use. 287 languages. We provide an enormous amount of functionality there. You can actually go and reuse it. Go try it out. It's in JavaScript. The fonts. You know about fonts, right? The tofu that you see on blocks, most of the Indian languages cannot render. Fonts, free fonts, high quality free fonts for 63 languages, including Indic languages, with 81 variants. Why are we doing this? We want to make sure that this baseline tool set is available for everybody on the web, which means that every browser can talk in your language. You can read and you can write in your language. Input tools to help you write. So when you are in an edit box on a website, you should be able to type it in. Go check it out on Wikipedia. It's built in uh, into input, to input boxes. We have 139 input methods for 64 languages. We keep growing and adding. Our objective is to have it for all the 287 languages. We don't need it for Latin-based languages because Latin comes uh, you know, built in into the browsers. But unfortunately, for other languages, like Indic family, CJK, uh, Cyrillic, Greek, we need that support. On-screen key maps, any of you guys are up for the challenge, you can come and help us write some of the on-screen key maps. That is a library we're going to use for being able to type on tablets and smartphones. So, good challenge. And then, of course, internationalization. A lot of detail, doing a lot of stuff. And we do software UI and message localization. Just think, everything is crowdsourced, everything is open source. It's a huge amount of work. Um, and working with different um, telecom partners to make sure that there is free access to Wikipedia for everyone, everywhere. So, where are we headed? Wikipedia is 14 years old, believe it or not, and we still only have 110,000 articles in Hindi. Wikipedia really is one of the most significant disruptive platforms on the internet today. It really is. It's amazing. Content commons. We want to be the content commons for the web, which means the magnitude that we carry in terms of content will only continue to grow with it because we see more and more people contributing and we are trying to build different ways that people can easily contribute, whether that's an image of a place that you like to take and post it on comments, whether that is an uh, article that you just went and edited or write a spell, spelling checked and fixed, or anything else. Create open data for all languages. It is a drive. We will push this because we uh, do care about this. Generating high quality content is one of our mandates. We do want to keep upping the quality of what is created. Delivering a first-class multilingual user experience. Very important concept 
as the web changes from being Latin based to being multilingual. It is imperative that everybody who speaks a non-Latin, non-European language can get the same user experience as English or as German or as Swedish. Because if you have to go and download an image to read your language, you've got a rotten user experience. So that is something which is very key. And engaging a new generation of users with mobile. Being mobile, being everywhere, on tablets as well as in smartphones and feature phones. And those two fundamental components. We will commoditize language software to be free, open, available as building blocks on all browsers and more. And it doesn't matter whether Google does not do it or Microsoft does not do it because we can do it. Okay? And keeping the web open and free, which is very important because if you don't keep the web open and free, you cannot contribute. Google will tell you what to contribute. You will not be able to contribute. That's why Wikipedia exists. So, again, I won't go too much into this because I want to take some questions. So I'll, I'll just brush through this. Um, this is just details about the content translation um, uh, platform that we are building. Again, I'm just racing through these slides because this is, you know, like a tool we are building. I wanted to just show you a visual on this. You can see this is the content, uh, source content that we are bringing up. So you can, as an editor, you can go and select the, an article in English. And you can say, I'm going to translate it to Hindi here or Marathi. Say, uh, here it is Korean. But you can see here, on the right-hand side, we have a language toolbar, which will actually give you suggestions from uh, machine translation, from uh, translation memory. I don't know, I think uh, I skipped some slides. But you can see that here, you have dictionaries, you have definition, you have the usage from the thesaurus. Again, we plan to integrate all kinds of data into that so that you can, as a user, just look it up here. I'm not something. I, mean, I want to see the exact meaning of it before I write it. And make it easier to write content. Just, it's easier. You can just look at different references. And we, have, we intend to do that for Indic languages. And you can do it paragraph by paragraph where we are doing suggestions that show up in machine, from machine translation or from translation memories. And then you can even do linked data. See that linked links? Those links are carrying over. It's pretty amazing the amount of stuff that we are doing with this platform. And that's all I have. Work with us. We're open source and open. Um, please contribute and ask me questions. Thank you. Questions, questions, comments? Questions. Yes. Hi. Stand up. Introduce yourself. So, hi. My name is Girish. I'm a faculty here at IDC. What is IDC? IDC is industry design. OK, cool. And so we do a whole range of things, so probably language is a couple of questions. How is the coverage of Wikidata as compared to Pinterest? Then how is it that you are differentiating? So, the three basic things I wanted to see what your take on Second is what's the interest in web forms? Because, uh, so there are two standards. So I personally was not very happy with 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 Wikipedia imposing their fonts on the, so I, I preferred my own. Are you talking about English? No, Hindi. So, okay. so, so the most of the responsible for the designing the part of the fonts directly from the Yeah, yeah. So we just released a free and open source yes, called Yeah. Yes. So, 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 so I believe this at several Wikipedia conferences, which is why is it that Wikipedia wants to impose their fonts? So why is it that they not let the system do it? A whole bunch. We don't impose anything. So, no, so, so as of now, so for example, Hindi and Marathi have loaded as the web font. So this is the opposite. Yes. Uh, whereas several current systems have much better. I, I don't know about that. So I mean, in um, uh, I can address the web fonts question first, even though it's not related directly to this presentation. So today, Wikipedia um, uh, pushes on-demand web fonts because most browsers, from the data that we pick up, do not have fonts 
that are being uh, that are available for specific languages for specific uh, uh, pages. So in Indic languages, you'd be surprised by the number of people on their systems or on their browsers don't have fonts. So we detect that and then we push fonts and we create it. We have a default available. You're welcome to turn it off as a user. But the reason for that is that we want to make sure people can read the information on a page. So it's not that we're dictating a font. It is actually that we're trying to address the ability for everybody to read the page. So as a designer, you might be picky about which font. <laughs> the fundamental concept is can people read first? So my issue with Lohit is actually coming. I understand what the problem with Lohit is, and I understand the technical aesthetic and aesthetical issues that Lohit has. But Lohit, for a very long time, unfortunately, has been the only family of open source fonts which are available on the internet for everybody to use. But no, you can say that I can download the Adobe fonts pirated. Yes, no, of course. But, so but are, that's not. Uh, and how does it compare to Pre-based, for example? That's Pre-based, for different question. Web font specific. We will deliver any fonts. The, you have made the fonts available now under open licenses. We will push that too. It's not that we are going to push only the list. We want to constantly deliver the best fonts that are available with the flag, with open licenses to the user. The user can pick. We are not in the business of actually recommending any font. We are just taking whatever is available. Because we are not in the business of creating fonts. We are just taking what is available on the web and being used in the open source environment with open licenses to be delivered to the user to read the page. So again, I I guess from a from a big computing perspective, they should have to have more than Absolutely. Fonts. I mean, I would request that you as a designer and a font designer design ten more fonts for every Indic language. What are you sitting and doing? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, give those ten fonts to me, I'll roll them out. But you do it. Do this, I would give them credit that the eight font is number. No, no, I I deeply thank you for it. But all I'm saying is, if you're gonna complain, Come up with a solution and give me some fonts. Yeah. I'll roll them out and not producing them. But if you remember in 2011, the Narayanam we have brought into the Marathi. If you remember the Akathon, the yes. Narayanam actually it was yes. initially available. We yes. brought it into the Marathi. Yes, absolutely. And, and again, Narayan was the predecessor of that font. Right. And uh, we, we generally work with everybody who is willing to give us We care deeply about having a great user experience and having the best fonts for Indic languages. But believe me, there are not enough Indic fonts of high quality, which are beautiful, and which are technically high quality. They really are, right? So if you have, if you have just released the family, you can get, thank you for it. Um, and again, we will roll out whatever we can. Okay, yes. yeah. I just want to answer the second one. No, I mean, can I answer your question on pre-based after this? Yeah, sure. So I have actually two things to say. Uh, one was, uh, firstly, I was thank you very much for a very nice presentation. And sort of agree with most of the things. In fact, with my own, I think you have much better data than that, that's why I was taking pictures. So I hope that's so because I cannot build a similar presentation on uh, similar lines just using the data of Wikipedia and and, and, uh, and uh, so one of the things that actually that we were looking at and which probably could, so you listed this list of uh, uh, speakers of the language which is a fair comparison one would some would think and then many others would think in their mind without articulating this perhaps directly to you. And you know, but the internet penetration in different places is yes. different. Yes. And you know, you, you can, so we, I mean, we could work to change that as well, but uh, other than, so, but I had a, a different take on that. So I have, how many internet users are there in that language? Yes. Okay, and if you put that as a third column against that, then, you know, going by the classic uh, thought of 
how many engineers does it take to change a light bulb? So we asked how many internet users in that language does it take to make one Wikipedia page? Yes. And Indian language is still to come at the bottom of the pile. Yes, that's correct. So and I, I have the data, I can add that in next time. Yeah, yeah. so yeah, probably I look forward to that. But yeah. it still comes at the bottom yeah, of the pile. And, sure. and one of the languages that comes at the top of the pile is a language called Wari Wari, yeah. which is in Philippines. I and so that's, that's how it comes, very amazing. Yes, uh, that's correct. So, so Second thing, uh, so you mentioned actually very briefly the input methods. Yes. And that's the area that we work with Girish as well, like you know, people oh, from our team awesome. who have made sure that there's no place here to sit. And so, <laughs> so, and I think we are really concerned about uh, the level of or the kind of input that people are having. I mean, the least, we are the least SMS country in the world. We are the least Twitter country in the world as well. And, uh, and this is like per capita, I mean, per internet user. Yep. Twitter yeah. as well, and uh, so, and, and all of this actually points largely therefore to input rather than love for language. For example, That's right. for example, I mean we have a lot more television viewership yeah. in Indian languages yeah. than we have for English. Like English, we are together at about two and a half percent, and that's why cricket has moved to Hindi, and that's why all the economic, well, the, the financial channels have moved to Hindi, and so on, and Gujarati. Yeah. Uh, so. I think that uh, input, I think, therefore, means a lot more focus, and we would be happy to collaborate on Absolutely. that. Absolutely. So, I mean, we, as I mentioned briefly, I mean, I didn't go into that in detail because I was looking at data in this presentation, and I can easily, you know, be happy to go into input methods a lot. We have been doing significant amount of work in input methods, and we have taken every single input method that's available on the web and used by the Indians, as well as open source projects. And added them to our open repositories. It would be the largest open source repository of input methods. You're welcome to go and look at it and add them onto it. If you see that there are any input methods that are missing, please add them. We will de roll them out on a okay. um, uh, so it, it is an open project. Please sure, add sure. them. So you would you would be happy to add ours when you are being but the other challenge that actually is a larger challenge and going in into the next decade of computing is on screen and on screen key maps for the new languages have problems, right? One, there's no standard. And if the Indian government doesn't have a standard, there is no ad hoc standard. Uh, we can create one and we can use it. But there are no standards. And a body like IIT, where there's a lot of thinking going on around. Well, there is a UKB standardization project happening right yes, now. Yes, I mean, but. Uh, but anyway, I don't have to mention that. You, I'm, I'm you, know, it, but you understand the process of standardization in India. Yeah, it's slow. And, so. and um, I don't want to wait for it. I cannot afford to wait. Yeah. My you custom users are needed now. Yeah, so, but I have always had reservation about the English based input methods, mainly because it represents a very, very small community of the world. Yes. Like, right. like English based Hindi input methods are represented by even smaller uh, proportion of the country. That people who can speak English. I agree. And, and fundamentally, there is a key problem in input methods for input methods. First, even the current desktop input methods, which have been adapted for the web now, are not designed for Indian language input methods. They are not designed to just put together because you figured out that on a Latin keyboard, you could do three layers of you know, yeah, yeah, sure. control shift. Uh, tilde and a character and create a character. Okay. Who does that? Right? So the point is that those input methods to begin with are not really those that good. They're not well designed and they're not really adapted for Indic languages which have a lot more characters and a lot more openness. The second is that as we go into the world of on screen key maps, everything is moving to digital and touch and, and more forth. It is very important to redesign those two maps and do them from a design aesthetics and usability perspective so they are well integrated as an open library for every device on the planet so that a Samsung, a, a BenQ, a Nokia, a Google can go and just pick up those on-screen key map libraries and just use them. But they have to be designed by Indians who actually has sense of usability and aesthetics to the Indian language user and be
be described as a specification, you publish instead. So look at your books. You don't have to wait for the government to tell you what to do. Do it. So the point is that publish it. And then let there be collaborative discussion on it. Do it the open way, with the open source way, right? And and just publish your standard. We'll build it. Won't take us more than a week to build. Building the technology is not the issue. The issue is the usage, the usability, the design, and doing a good job. Otherwise, you get key maps out of China, which list Indian characters as you will read them. You type ga, ka, ga, ga, your together, at one after the other. Go check out the Google Kindle tools. They're pathetic. Because they're not designed by Java for usage in the way a native user will type in a particular language. And then you take that incorrect, incomplete paradigm, just copy it over from the key maps that exist now, fundamentally reinventing the same stuff and carrying it over into Dutch. What's the point of that? Do a spec and put out a spec. I'd like to go see it. I can show you something now. Please help me. Any other questions? Uh, myself, CG. I am working in mobile computing for the last few years. Oh. I have two questions. Uh, one is about the web phones. How this web phones is going to interact with the, any kind of system level applications in mobile phones? Especially if you are using any kind of web view or some certain times in Android. Uh, the Android backend is kind of very weird architecture for Indian language rendering. We do a lot of R&D in that. So how is it going to interact with the web phones in Android or any other mobile phone? So web forms are fundamentally pushed on the uh, on the page level, right? On the HTML yes, right, CSS right. And it really is not, you know, something that Android OS is pushing. Uh, there is some uh, option in Android. I know. Yeah. And you can override yeah, it. Right. right? Yeah. But web fonts only kick in when system level and uh, browser level don't exist. Okay. 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 Or, or native OS. Okay. Okay. So, web fonts, I don't want to maintain web fonts. I want that to be in the browser, actually. Okay. It's in, but what you're seeing is the implementation of a technology that is needed by the user mm -hmm. and is not available by the browser. Okay. So, what does Wikipedia do in the meantime? Yeah, so, 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 what is, so, what he's asking is quite relevant to what I asked. So, what happens if you don't have yes. system level support? Yes. There's no point in pushing, pushing the web support. And if there's system level support, then then there's most likely a font. So, why do you say that? Uh, so, so, we've done some study on this. And we've essentially found that if there is system level support, especially for Devnagri. So, I'm talking the case of Devnagri and the, the major index. If there's system level support, the Unicode rendering engine is available, then Windows, Macintosh will provide one. It's only Linux systems which don't have any That's not true. No, no. The Wikipedia Square, your usability study probably will not scale. What we do a lot, lot of usability testing. We do a lot of studies at that scale. So if there's no system level support, then pushing a web font is a problem because these systems cannot render. Yeah. Well, understood. But the point is system level support and system level provision of a font are two different things. Do you understand that? Right. So, so, then so what I am saying is that the system doesn't have a font loaded for a system, uh, a font that is supported by the system. That's a different scenario from yes. what you are saying, where the system in Unicode cannot support that script, or that scan Unicode spec is not being supported by the system. Right. That is totally a different use case. That's not what is going on. There's so leave, there's another meeting. Yes, so I mean, so we we're actually almost over. Another five minutes and then. Yeah. So I hope that addresses the distinction. Uh, that is the distinction. Uh, I have one more question yeah. regarding yeah. input mechanism, yeah. input yeah. methods. Sir. Again, that is dependent on system level, not necessarily into any kind of web font or something like that. Sure. Suppose in Android, if the Indian language is not support, Hindi is not support, then we can't do anything in input mechanism. Whatever the standard we are having, or whatever mechanism we are having. Well, that's right. And push your key map from the web page. Yeah. 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 Okay, okay, okay. So that will be only for the uh, certain websites. Uh, yeah, but remember that okay. the web is moving towards HTML, CSS, 
native apps are Agreed. actually being described very heavily. Agreed. And the standard specification, go and read it from the W3C, is moving to an HTML, CSS right. specification, mm -hmm. but that is the where mobile uh, development and support of Ponce is going. Because why I'm raising this point is that uh, I had details of AOSP, uh, yeah. Android for support for Indian language rendering and AOSP. And it was pathetic. Yes. The way which they did, they even they don't know how they did the yes. rendering and all this stuff. So. Yeah. And each and every vendor doing their own way. Yep. Samsung did their own way and some other company did their own way for rendering the text. Yes. So in that case, uh, uh, again, it's a web font maybe standard one, but otherwise it will be a big issue. Yes. You can be different standard, uh, Samsung will enter some other way and other device will enter some other way. So that may be the Kind of one of the point which we have to take care of. Uh, oh. We do. So, I mean, we uh, you know, work and push uh, JS requests very heavily into Chrome and into Android okay. and into uh, Firefox. Into, uh, you know, the only OS we really have issues with is iOS because yes. the iOS right. is relatively close compared to the right. other OSs, uh, mobile and browser. And uh, we work very heavily in terms of you know surfacing these issues. But remember, this is a changing paradigm. Um, the state at which web browsers are at today, they are transitioning into mobile, being mobile browsers, right? And so there is a certain element of <coughs> language support that gets prioritized based on markets. So when you're looking at commercial browsers, you will never have a language which is not being used very heavily. And this is particularly a problem with Indian yeah. languages, but right? But 100, 100 million phones sold, uh, million smartphones sold in the last four years. Yeah. yeah. So, so I mean, that's why Google is very, very active in providing a language support right now. So, I mean, so, I mean, so at least for Indian languages, beyond the scale. But some languages, not Yeah, at least in the top 15 right now. I mean, I'll say again. They're supporting so, several languages now. Yeah. I, I mean to say AOS, Android supporting seven languages now. Android is yeah, yeah. Yeah. supporting seven languages. Samsung is more, right? Yeah, Samsung is more. Mm -hmm. The Microsoft is putting out that, I would say. Yes, exactly. But, but the, my request is that, you know, where you're building certain components, we maintain open source repositories. Please contribute to the source. Because at least at the Wikipedia level, we can push that. And that in itself is used as a barometer by Google, for example, where they have to prioritize languages because of the right? So leverage that because that's something that you know, drives the support for languages, Indic languages, off the shelf. And we can have that in a year versus five years. And that's the game thing. So really, really there, because that is where the collaboration is working together now. And push that to the application. So that happens. Who better does it? Sorry? Yeah, for posting of the last the last that we do, that's just an example. We are using, we are using Persian versions. Uh, for um, We are using Bing Translate. Google Translate, looking at all these. Uh, uh, are you using any media? Uh, uh, I'm interested in the media. No, uh, I'm very interested in finding out. Yes, and I'd like to talk to you about it. Yes. But uh, thank you again, and you know where to find me if there are any questions